What's up everybody, it's Soren Baker, Amir Rahimi, and today on The Great Debaters, we're taking y'all to game, giving you some game, man. Check us out. Alright Amir, so here on The Great Debaters, obviously we love, cherish, and admire the West Coast artists, and somebody we wanted to give some shine to was game. And to make it a little different, we wanted to do the best Game and 50 Cent collaborations on his debut album, The Documentary. Or at least his Aftermath debut album, The yep. Documentary, which came out in 2005. Obviously prior to that, he had worked extensively with JT The Bigger Figure. He had done hundreds of songs over the years, and The Documentary was his explosion to the mainstream and getting him there. And there's, of course, the three songs on here, man. How We Do, West Side Story, and Hate It or Love It, that feature 50 Cent, and that were all huge records in 2005 and even on to 2006 and beyond, and even today, yeah. those songs still get a lot of love. So, let's go through these three songs, discuss and debate, and see what's going on. So Amir, for you, which of those three do you remember hearing first or having the most connection to initially and why? First was West Side Story. I know it came out first. That was also the first one I uh, had heard. Okay. And I, th I think it was 04. I think that one was 04. Mm -hmm. um, man, I love just hearing Dre produce, Scott Storch produce, both of them. Um, I like how, because this is before I had actually bought the album when I heard okay. this song. So when I heard him naming off all these West Coast artists and even referencing like lyrics, like Tupac lyrics. Right. And then uh, with, with a little sprinkle of the East while he's mentioning Cool G Rap, I love how he stuck to the script of, you know, Chanton West Side, and even at 50 Cent to say West Side on the hook. I thought West that was Side? very cool. Exactly, right. I love that. Uh, and I thought their chemistry was going to be something that we would see in the next few years. Obviously, it didn't last we super, super songs. long, but we got a few great songs. Uh, but West Side Story, I thought was very special, and I just love that beat as well and how he wrote the beat. Yeah. For West Side Story, for me, I just always enjoyed the hard element of it, the yeah. super hardcore sound that obviously Dre is a master of creating and making immensely brilliant songs mm -hmm. so for me that was the thing that resonates with me the most about that song I really like the interplay with 50 and game and obviously game is the dominant one on the song mm -hmm. uh, clearly but I also thought that it just kind of gave a little bit of a stamp of I'm from the West Coast I'm proud to be from the West Coast and I'm helping to bring the West Coast back I am bringing the West Coast back yeah. and I liked Obviously, prior to this game, had been very confident, arrogant, and you know, I'm the man, I'm the best, all that type of stuff that a lot of the great rappers have that game has as well. And I think, you know, on this song in particular, that really, you know, was illustrated and demonstrated, and I think it reflected in the power of the song itself. So, moving on to some of the other songs, uh, How We Do. Mm -hmm. For that one, you gotta smile, Amir, what's that about? Man, uh, you know, this was also Dre, and, and I can never pronounce his last name, but Mike... Elianzato. E. There we go. Uh, Mike Elianzato. And I actually read somewhere that this was something that Game kind of went behind Dre's back and heard the beat, mm -hmm. and then he started writing to it, and then the song kind of came about, and then they recruited 50 for the hook, and then uh, also verse... Man, this one, it really reminds me, I don't want to say this term because I feel like it has kind of a negative meaning behind it, but it reminds me a lot of ringtone rap. Okay. I had I'd heard this on quite a few ringtones. I was in middle school at the time when this came out. And I remember just hearing this on a few people's ringtones. I remember seeing the music video on, it was either 106 in Park or, you know, taking it back. But uh, man, this one I really, really liked like a lot. And I like how something with these three songs uh, that we see with Hate It or Love we're gonna talk about after is that I like how every song that they did together has a kind of different formula. One 50's oh, yeah. just doing the hook. Another 50 and Gamer doing the hook. They're splitting verses. Another one 
you know, it's just half and half. You know, I just love how nothing just sticks to one formula that shows that they're pretty good combo together, at least while they lasted. So how we do is was very special. I like the kind of simple chorus, but super dope and it fits in the club. Banger. Yeah, and I think that also is an illustration of Dre's genius, not only as a producer, but as a executive producer and as an architect of albums to be able to have this variety and this type of variance from song to song. And, you know, a lot of people, like obviously, Amir, you and I, we study music, but a lot of people that just listen to it may not appreciate or understand those nuances and those differences, but they're very significant as far as an album and putting together an album and the sequencing of an album and why you like an album. It has a similar feel in the sense, but then it has all these different things within that similar piece of the pie, you know, and it's, you know, it just talks to, you know, Dre's brilliance and then 50 Cent and Game's willingness to collaborate, work together and, you know, but execute this vision that they all had and just deliver super high quality music. So That's for true. Hate It or Love It, what uh, what do you think of this one and why? Um... This one it was like a kind of bit more bright production, a little yeah. more happy. I remember when I first heard the opening, because granted I was in middle school and I first heard 50 Cent saying he was confused, his mama kissing a girl. I was like, what is this? Like, I don't know what it is <laughs> back when I was when I was younger. But uh, no, nah, man, this is another dope one. 50 Cent starts this one off. Um, I like the uh, Eric B and Rock Kim reference, of course. Yes, yep. Check, check out my melody. Right. Amazing. Um... And game comes into and and cool and Dre produced this one as well and I like that a lot. I mean, I really like how they're saying you know the under underdogs are on top and and they're just gonna keep going and going. And even today, it's cool to see even though they went down different paths, we see the game still making music and it's still relevant. And Fifty Cent, you know, doing a little bit less music, but he's also doing TV and other things, and he's still on top. So I also found that very interesting how the chorus still kind of holds weight. And I think too, throughout this album and subsequent in the rest of Game's career, which is continuing strong till today, I think, you know, for the early part of Game's career, a lot of people looked at the documentary uh, and just because he was so heavy on mentioning Dre or Lowriders or Cadillacs or Compton Nikes. or whatever, <clears throat> that they kind of discounted him and didn't follow his career but like the line in this song where he talks about now if I go 5-0 it all starts to make sense like those type of things that game does I think show that he's much more of a credible and great lyricist and rapper and somebody that is able to take <clears throat> you know things and twist them and make them good and that's what a good lyricist does and we see that on Hate It or Love It and obviously throughout Game's career which has a lot of other great albums. Make sure 1992 is one of my unsung favorites if you haven't heard that. And then I also did a book with the game on the Red album. Make sure you pick that up on Amazon if you haven't already, but I'm a big fan of the Red album and a lot of the albums later in Game's career that he doesn't get a lot of uh, recognition or I'd say as much appreciation for. And I think that, you know, Hate It or Love It lyrically shows you know, that and why game, one of the reasons why game has been able to sustain himself for so long because he's, you know, he's a great writer and has a lot of great ideas and, you know, is very consistent and prolific. He's released so much material over the years. So that being said, that being said, Amir, we now have the three songs. So which one do you think is the best collaboration between 50 Cent and the game on the documentary and why? I'm going how we do. <clears throat> Um, okay. I love, first of all, I love Game's rebellious nature of, of going, uh, taking advantage of the situation, listening to Dre beats as I would also do in that scenario if I was given the chance, and the that mistake making a classic out of it. Okay. Dre's vision to bring 50 Cent in uh, to fly him in and do that, or wherever he was in, drive him in wherever, and do that. And I love the chorus, how it's simple. I love how they both are splitting the song up. I just think it's incredible. Okay. Bottom line. Well, we're going to disagree on this one. I'm going with West Side Story because I think 
cohesively, I think that's the best song in the sense that I think that's the best beat of the three. I also think that Game, his confidence, his arrogance, and his presence, I think is the strongest on that song. And maybe that's because 50 just does the chorus really. <laughs> but I just feel that Game is so powerful on that song and so like thumping his chest like, yo, I'm the man and you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm gonna bring everybody with me. And we saw with this album that the game really ushered in what's still going on today with the West Coast and the gangster rap resurgence that we see on the West Coast. And I think this song really is, even though it's not as commercially big as uh, How We Do or Hate It or Love It, it's also very significant. So that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's Amir's opinion. But what do you guys think about those three songs from the documentary games Aftermath album debut back in 2005. Hit us up in the comment section. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And of course, Amir and I will hit you back either on Unique Access or on Rapping and Snacking. And we appreciate your guys' support. I'm Soren Baker. Amir Hemi. Hit us up. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV has just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.